There was this passionate mountaineer named Juju Wu in Taiwan. She was portrayed as somebody who really loved taking selfies. That's why it led to her death. The media and the public were saying that, well, she died because she was trying to take a selfie. And sometimes when people say that, it's in a very negative way. It's almost like, ha ha, that person tried to take a selfie and look, this is what happened. But a death is a death. No one ever confirmed that Gigi Wu died because of taking a selfie. Wait, how did she die then? That's something that we're going to get into. Gigi Wu was just like any other mountain climbers. She loved hiking. Any thrill that she could get from climbing or hiking, she would do it. But there was something really special about her and how she did it. She was known as the bikini hiker or the bikini climber. So Gigi would climb up to mountains all the way up to the summit and she would take a picture of her in a bikini. Oh, so she climbed the top and she like stripped off all her clothes? Yeah, pretty much. And she made it really artsy, these pictures. And she would post it on her Instagram. Gigi got into hiking in her early 30s. Within five years, She became an expert in hiking. And let me tell you what expert means. In Taiwan, there's this list called Taiwan Bai Yue List. This list consists of a hundred mountains in Taiwan that are really hard to climb. These mountains are typically 10,000 feet above sea level. Super high. They're not easy trails. With this list, Any passionate climbers will want to achieve this, right? And Gigi did. She did that within four years. Climbed all these mountains. That's pretty impressive. 100 mountains in four years. Yeah. Gigi would climb up the mountain in climbing clothes. When she got to the summit, she would change into her bikini. And then she would post everything and these pictures on Instagram. And she garnered a lot of followers. People really liked her bravery. People really liked how carefree she was. People enjoy these pictures. But of course, when you have fans, you have haters. Haters would be like, why are you dressed this way? Why are you taking pictures like that? Why do you need to wear a bikini to show off? And you might be wondering why she's wearing bikini at the top of the mountain. It was because a few years ago, when she first started climbing, she lost a bet to a friend. And because of the bet, she had to wear a bikini at the top of the next summit that she makes. In an interview one time, she said she just really enjoyed the pure beauty of everything the nature, how she gets into a bikini, and how she takes these beautiful photos. She just loved everything of it, and she really embraced it all. At the end of 2018, she had gotten into an accident while she was climbing. She went onto Facebook telling all her friends and family, saying that, I almost died from hiking this time. Did she fall? Yeah. Oh, so she fell like a far way. I don't know how far she fell, but she said, thank goodness I survived and I'm so grateful. But that didn't stop her because she just really loved what she did. However, just a few months later, Gigi's passion for hiking would lead to her tragic death. On January 11, 2019, Gigi decided to hike the tallest and highest mountain in Taiwan. At ground level in Taiwan, January's weather can range from about 50 to 65 degrees. I know it doesn't sound cold when you're comparing to somewhere like the East Coast, New York, New Jersey, right? The thing is that if you are really high in altitude, it gets super cold. Mm -hmm. It can go below freezing. Yeah, even on like a regular spring day, it's pretty cold up there. Yusan National Park is smacked right in the middle of Taiwan. It's really hard to get to. Gigi had to take three trains, one bus to just get to that national park. To get to the top of this mountain, just straight up, no stopping, it takes up to 12 hours. But of course, there are many different trails in the mountains too. So you can imagine this mountain is super high and there's no way that you can hike for 12 hours straight without stopping, eating, doing anything, taking a bathroom break. Like, it's not possible, right? So in her backpack... She had her camp stuff. She had um, her noodles, all different kinds of snacks. Food. 
And of course, she had her photo equipment, right? Because that's what she loved doing. She also had a satellite phone so that she can get in contact with her friend. Her friend's name was Yang. She kept in close contact with him throughout the entire hike. And before she went on this hike, she checked the weather. The weather said, clear skies, everything will be great. Enjoy your hike. Told her that? No, I'm just saying that because it's nice weather, you know, enjoy your hike. Just in 2018, Gigi hiked a total of 127 days out of 365 days. That's a third of the year. So you can imagine how prepared she can be when she goes hiking. Danger is not something that's unknown to her. She's used to this. She's been doing this. So as Gigi was hiking this mountain, the weather started to change. It started to rain. Fog started coming. And she was like, okay, I got to find camp. Like I have to set up my camp somewhere. So she phoned her friend Yang and she told him, she said, you know, I got to set up camp now. I will let you know once I find a place. And, you know, just to give you an update. Yang was like, okay, yeah, let me know. Hours gone by. Yang has not heard from Gigi. He's starting to get a little worried. Then suddenly his satellite phone went off. And he's like, oh my God, okay, it's Gigi. Picks up the phone. Hello? You can hear like the staticky sound, right? Because it's a satellite phone. Gigi was like, I, I need help. Oh no. You can hear that she sounded really distressed and there was urgency in her voice. Yang was trying to make out what she was saying. By the end of the call, he said, keep warm. I'm going to find help. Yang had gotten her coordinates, but also Gigi told him over the phone that she couldn't move her bottom half of the body because she fell from a cliff. Ooh. Yeah. But she could still move because she's calling, right? She's conscious. So you know that she could still kind of do stuff. But the thing is that her legs were hurt. She couldn't go anywhere. She was stuck. So Yang goes to the fire department and emergency personnel immediately. He was like, there is a hiker in Yusan Mountain. We need to go get her. But the thing was that the weather was so bad, they couldn't go. There was fog everywhere. It was still raining. It was cold. It was wet. There was no way that they could have made it. And the helicopter that they would send later on, you can't see anything. So what was the helicopter going to do? So they were like, okay, Yang, we're going to go the next morning, okay? Like, first thing at the crack of dawn, we'll go find her. At the crack of dawn, they started going, including the helicopter. They even found an aboriginal tribe person who knows the mountain really well to go hike with them to locate Gigi. They would hike for a total of 28 hours before they got to her. Wow, oh my god. So they took that long just to find her? I think because of the weather, because of how dangerous the trails were, and just the trail was already really hard to navigate. When they got to the coordinates that Gigi had provided, they were like, okay, I think Gigi is still alive because they can see that from the cliff, the fall would have been 100 feet. But we're not talking about like 100 feet straight down. Probably 100 feet like you might be tumbling down. Mm, so they found like the area where she would have fell. Yes, yes. And they were saying that if she had fallen any further than these coordinates, she would have died from the fall. Mm -hmm. So as they were looking, they were like, GG, GG, but no response. Then they saw a backpack with equipment all laid out on the ground. And then they saw a body. It was Gigi's body. They went over, touched her. She was really cold. Her entire body was cold. Her eyes were closed. She was laying on the floor. Was she still alive? She was no longer alive. Oh. Gigi had tried to get things out of her backpack when she couldn't move the bottom part of her body. Because the weather was so cold and because she couldn't move, she had a really tough time to try to get things out. She couldn't set anything up. And because the weather dropped below freezing, 
she didn't have enough warmth. So she died from hypothermia, which is caused by prolonged exposure to really cold temperature. They came to the conclusion that she probably died that night when she fell. The helicopter came and took her body. When the hiking community found out that Gigi had died, people were saddened. They were like, Gigi was such a brave hiker. And she really did a lot for the community because she will always share tips when she hiked. There were 300 people who went to her funeral to honor Gigi's legacy. But not everybody saw it that way. Not the news, not the general public. When they found out that Gigi had died from hypothermia, people were like, she was probably wearing her bikini, that's why she died. But when the rescuers found her, she was wearing her hiking gear. She was in the bikini. But other people were saying, oh, it's probably because she was taking a selfie. That's why she died. When the, How do people know that? Because they just assume she was the person who posted a lot of selfies and pictures of herself on Instagram. But when the rescuers got to her and found her backpack laying next to her, the photo equipments were neatly packed into the backpack, not touched. So she was just doing her thing, like hiking and climbing. Yeah. People didn't dig into it and they just jumped into conclusions. Yo, that's messed up. Yeah. People are like tarnishing her name. Just, exactly. I mean, it's dangerous mountain. That could happen to anyone. Right. And I think people were just kind of making fun of her almost. Taking selfie, that's why you died. Wearing bikini, that's why you died. Gigi wasn't the only one who died at Yusan National Park. Like you said, many people die from hiking. And because this is a dangerous mountain, other people died too. And the prime minister of Taiwan was like, okay, we got to do something about this. And they ended up trying to make signals better and improve the signals within the mountain ranges. Oh, like cell phone signal. Yes. Uh. Yes. Even though Gigi was able to get in contact and they weren't able to get to her in time, but other people might not have had signal. So that's why they thought, you know, in honor of her, let's do this and try to make the climbing experience better. And in case if something happens, then people would be able to get in contact with the outside world. That was the story of Gigi. And I think it was just a really sad story and a little bit controversial because people thought that she was taking a selfie. People thought that she was doing it for the gram, but no, she was just doing it for the thrill. 